Thank you for staying with us. It's time for Of The Press, where we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kendi Wandu, as a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but he's joining us here in Lagos State. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Thank you for joining us. And the journalists, good morning. Let me not claim that to know the Mr. Okay. Yes, we are, we, are, we are hoping that you are um, you are making money through the legal your legal prowess because mm -hmm. this is a time where every politician is going to court. Yes. So maybe you are making yes. so much money. We have to pronounce. No. It's a no. case of making the payments. So I don't live. No. Unless you don't live, I don't live. I'm a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we have off cycle elections that just finished. Mm -hmm. So definitely something is coming from there. Anyways, okay. let's move over to the papers. So we're going to be looking at Punch first this morning, and the major headline here says, National Assembly may pass budget, sat, sat um, 541 MDAs and defense. And the writers here says, Senate reps to harmonize appropriation bill, um, I Saturday for passage, Senator, Sen Senate spokesperson. And we also have committees sub submitting reports, January to December budget cycle will be sustained, says committee chair. What are your thoughts on this one? Yes, um, it's good that uh, the Senate uh, has to do not Senate, sorry, the National Assembly has uh, stopped his, uh, uh, his uh, job uh, making sure that uh, the, the budget is passed. And uh, uh, I'm surprised at the sweetness at which they're able to tidy up the, the budget as it due and uh, Ready to pass it. In the past, we have several uh, challenges. Mm. Uh, one uh, in the past has been that um, uh, this budget uh, is, is not going to see it presented till early the next year, and that became the problem. I think that the uh, cycle was corrected by the last administration of President uh, Muhammad Buhari. Just secondly, you come to see that most of the ministries, uh, MD, MDs, and MDs, at that point, you've got to come and defend their budget. And that in itself what is a lot of delay. Uh, uh, the, the top one is that when the National Assembly also seek some clarification on some of these budgets, then most of them will be able to deliver uh, most of the what is required or what the acts of them. One is to have they spent the last budget, the money allocated to them, and what they use it to uh, the last budget. Then the, the big elephant in the house has always been padding. I'm sure you remember padding and padding. Mm -hmm. Um, that uh, the, the budget, especially also the part of the, the members of the National Assembly, that are really a problem. But we don't know, it seems to have gotten their hearts right. And um, that this budget is passed uh, too. But time and time again, I will say that it's not passing the budget is not a problem. For me. The part is the implementation because most right. of the time, at the end of the year, you come to see that. Um, we don't, uh, most of our budget don't even cross, cross the 50% threshold, we have a 50% threshold of implementation, and that in itself becomes a problem. Then the last leg is yes, it's a budget, it's an estimate. How are we going to fund the budget will also be a major problem. It has to be a major problem because you come to see that we are going to be borrowing to service the uh, borrow and service that, and most of this borrowing are also going to visit. So we should be able to think out of because and find means ways and means of generating enough revenue that we can be able to uh, implement the budget. Um, the budget is predicated on certain things. I think it's about seventy dollars per uh, yes yes seventy dollars per barrel of uh, crude oil, and we hope that we'll be able to, be able to sustain that uh, with what is happening across the globe in uh, Israel and Hamas mm -hmm. in Ukraine. Of late now, the biggest problem is that um, UT rebels are now attacking new ships, shipping um, crude oil to some parts of the world, and that in itself is taking a toll on movement of crude across the globe. That um, some ships that now have to pass have to pass through longer routes to get to their destination. So, but all in all, um, let us have the best. The problem is that we must also be able to make sure that we are, we are spending more on capital projects rather than just recurrent, um, uh, which has always been. Capital project is what it is, is supposed to be. 
Then, when we get these loans, let us also know what these loans are used for. It's not just collecting loans, we are collecting loans. I say collecting loans is going out of passion, but these loans must be pegged to certain um, uh, projects which must be told, Nigerians must be told, because it's not the money of the president, it's not the money of the national state, it's the money of Nigerians. Yeah. Okay, so talk. Sorry, talking about implementation. I mean, um, this administration is about seven months in. Do you see? Can you trust this administration to actually implement all of the things in this budget, and to be able to um, save up even with the budget? Because we're talking about loans now. So, are they going to be able to use the money judiciously? Not just this government. There's always a, a, a deficit trust when it comes to relationship between the people and. The government. Because the government is said one thing on one side and drainage. So it's not just about the budget alone. Look at the uh, palliatives, the promises that this, I'm sticking to this government and the palliatives promises they made to Nigeria that they're going to give out. Just one month, the, you saw the 35,000 mm -hmm. naira that promised that. They've been right. on that. That is one. The palliatives, uh, the palliatives used to be in the purpose of the government officials and also uh, governors. The only state, the only state that I know that is distributing palliatives in Bono State, you have seen what that governor is doing in that state, that war ravaged state. And that man has become an example of what governor should be Let's go to other places, including my governor. I don't know what my governor is doing. Nobody seems to have got any palliatives. So it's not just um, uh, passing the budget, implementation. Yes, I've told, I've told you that the indices, yes, the budget may look robust, but the fact is that implementation is always be want to have enough money to be able to implement this budget and we didn't be able to follow it through. A situation where we use the money, our money budgeted to buy um, SUV jeeps mm. because our roads are bad, according to them. <laughs> where we're going to use uh, 15 billion naira to build the house, to build the house of the vice president. Right. Where we are buying presidents uh, in George, that although they told us enough to be they can say that to the marine. So it is focused, being focused and tight. And making sure that all the indices and all the businesses is well implemented. But any short of that, then we are back to where we used to. Yeah, when, when we were talking about the government needing to find ways and means to fund the budget, I, I was just laughing because that, that, that word or that phrase, ways and means, reminded me of what uh, happened in the last government where they were borrowing and borrowing from the central bank and even from the pensions fund and so many other places. and. I was laughing, but my concern is I don't know if the time between the uh, the time between the presentation of the budget and the passing of the budget is enough for them to scrutinize uh, the budget the way it should be scrutinized. Because okay, for instance, in this short period, 541 MDAs have ended their defense. There could be more that need to do that, but the hurry is that they should pass the budget before it enters January. Is the craze for starting a budget in January what, uh, uh, worth it? Let me just say worth it. Because if you are in a hurry to pass the budget so that you can start from January, we know that, okay, we're starting this year with this budget, and mm. then you fail to do what you're supposed to do, which means the padding you were talking about may be there and they might not even see it. Uh, maybe... Uh, deliberately or otherwise, but is the time enough? Is it because we are just start, trying to start the budget in January and then we can do anything in the short time that we are given? I will come this slide and give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, from what I had, they had about close to 130 or 125 committees that looked at into the, into the, uh, the budget. budget. So I want to believe that they have a formidable and they've done a very, very thorough job. On this, and um, so I'll give them the benefit. It's something that they do, it's nothing new. So, um, but uh, then, don't forget my brother, after all, that's the state, as a state, when they pass budget, we need to power, so they get toxic. So, you know, this is the way they pass for the past budget, we need to do power. But uh, no, I'm not serious, um, I, I think they must have done what they need to do. They might not be able to capture everything that I. Uh, by the time they finally passed it, and the process as it seems, the government does not come back the way it was presented to them. You will, see, you will see a lot of changes. There will be, be, be instances where they remove certain budget heads and put it in another one. And 
the number one on the supplemental budget. Now the issue of the presidential year was removed by the National Assembly, and now uh, I think we move into the scholarship scheme mm. uh, of the yeah, scholarship scheme. So that is what normally happened. That would be, that would be very, very instances where a lot of rejigging was going to be done on address of the budget. The fact is that they want this budget to start implementing. This is going to be the very first budget that this government, the Telugu government, is going to present and is going to be implemented. What they implemented the last time was a budget that was um, uh, that was uh, prepared by Muhammad Buhari uh, in June, uh, but they want to have it as a, uh, uh, a supplementary budget to add to that. So, I don't see any problem. If there's any problem, I'm sure they could do any problem. I mean, all right, let's move over to River State. Um, so here on the panch and as well as The Guardian, we have this one that says, Fubara, Wiki, reach truce as Tinubu intervenes again. And The Guardian, it says, Tinubu broke his truce as Fubara, Wiki, signed peace agreement. Um, so we know the saga that has been happening in River State. I mean, we've seen the news of um, Wiki even speaking about um, don't break the ladder. I think I think it's that those are the words you use. Yeah. Don't 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 pull the ladder right. Um, so what what is your take on all of this? Everything that has been happening in River State, as well as um, President Tinubu coming in to make sure that he's an agent of peace between both parties. To me, that is the most ridiculous agreement I've seen since 1999 when we assumed uh, this uh, democracy. Mm. Um, a, 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 an agreement that is about 90 percent, 95 percent upsided mm. um, towards uh, to favor um, yes or we to me is not an agreement. Mm. And I continue to ask which kind of a government is this for power? This does the man probably the wiki knows that he's weakly, my words, but he's a weak that's also why I picked it because this man has not behaved like a dog at all. What we can do now is what we can do take when he was governor of River State. Right. He wouldn't even sit to anybody. I'm sure you know that. Yes, there was. We can not listen to any president. We can not even listen to anybody. So, but now we can wants wants a governor to listen to him. And you look at the, out of the eight um, uh, eight agreement, it is only one that we said that what if Bara uh, uh, which is why that they should stop the uh, implement the uh, was it the impeachment procedure. Every other thing was, and to me, this is not democracy. This is not democracy because to me, this is more of dictatorship. Where, yes, in as much as they say, oh, we had uh, um, stakeholders from River State, that the governor, we had some people from River State who were there to be able to sign it. But to me, the governor would have much to be able to sign this, and I don't know why it's not. Let me tell you, in my place, we have a saying that if you kill a, a snake, and you know, come on the head. Mm. You cannot be too sure that that snake don't die. Mm -hmm. Because at any given time, if you just, you well, see so many times you kill the snake and don't totally severe the head, it will come back to haunt you. This issue, one, let us look at the issue of restatement of restatement of um, 27 or 26 uh, members of the legislative branch that have been camped to another party. That is a constitutional issue. That is not an issue to be decided by President uh, Mom, um, President. Well, I mean, to, to, yeah. to me, is also a stakeholder. Is a consigned interest. He's in, he's in APC. Is a is leader of the APC party. So he's a consigned. So he cannot take a decision on issue like that. That I expect the government to follow this through and get, go to the court and declare the seat of this. People. Let us follow it. It's the Supreme Court. Let the Supreme Court take a decision because Section One O Nine Sub One already is, is very very clear on issue of the defection. You say that they should raise it. And you should not take the budget that was passed by the other and take it back and lay it before them so that they can pass it. That is one. Secondly, that all the commissioners who resigned, look the word, check the word, resigned. They did we are not sacked, they were not sacked by the government. They voluntarily resigned their position. You say they must reabsorb them and send their names back to the state house of assembly to be approved. Then what are we talking? What are we that he must that he must not dissolve? Local governments at its way. So everything is just made. And I ask yourself, which kind of democracy? Are we? Well, that is Umara, that is for him. That is between him and the people of River State. But I just hope that he has not dug his grave because he who rides at the back of a tiger, most often than not, ends up in the stomach. So if he knows what is good for him and he thinks that this is the best he can do, 
I wish him good luck, but to me, this is just that brush. This, this, this is not what democracy is all about. Well, um, we know that the governor hasn't accepted all of these terms yet, but well, we're just waiting to see how the story would unfold. And um, at the end of the day, it's the growth of River State we're talking about here. And we can only hope that um, both Yensom, Wike, and um, Fubara, you know, they come together to reach an agreement that is amicable between both parties. Um, it, it's Yensom, Wike is his principle, right? And you would expect that maybe he wants some form of loyalty. Whose principle? At this time, <laughs> at this time it's, it's, not, it's, uh, it's like you are a teacher, my, you're a teacher and then your, <laughs> your student Prince. grows to a, a point you. of independence and you're still saying thank you have to come and kneel down because you're coming. Thank you, my brother. Is it not the prayer of every father that is song that should be True. Together? I, I'm, I, so I'm trying I, to play I, I, devil's I advocate to. here. <laughs> I see. I'm trying yeah. to play devil's yeah. advocate here, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir, I hear you. I hear you too, Yamgo. I'm just saying, I'm sure Yen Sam Wike wants some form of loyalty. That, oh, I'm your principal. I mean, we've seen things like that even happen in Lagos State as well. I'm your principal. Still give me the accolades that I deserve. But you can say he's pushing it too far. So my thoughts mm. here are just, they should both reach... Fubara learned from the best. Wow. So he <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. You're on point, my brother. Fubara learned from the best. When, so. when, we start hearing the, when we start hearing the music, day, day your day. I just said the man don't day in day. I didn't know that this guy did nothing to this day. <laughs> man just uh, this, uh, this band that is uh, just uh, nothing to But I hope, and I hope, and this is an emotional thing, I hope that we are not going to have what we, what was uh, what happened in, in the sixties? What was known as the Aburi Accord? I'm sure you mm, yes. remember yes. what the Aburi Accord. You remember what the Aburi Accord is all about? Yeah. Where uh, Modume Bujuku and um, uh, Gowan Go Go went to Aburi in Ghana to sign an accord and saying that oh we'll find the truth that everybody day your day and let's move on and only for them to come back to Nigeria and. Um, uh, was his name? The general Gowon was told by certain individuals in Nigeria. Ah, how you go sign this kind of thing? Do you know what he go do? You go sign out uh, before you know it. He say, "Oh, uh, uh, one and say, oh no, I do not believe in Nigeria." That was how the war started, and that is how the nineties. So I hope this is not. Um, Fubara will not go back. And uh, as I bet, I, I'll say it time. I, I I repeat myself. This is the most ridiculous. The most ridiculous. Um, um, the agreement I've ever seen in Christian history in Nigeria, and I don't know why the governor decided to do what he did. But let's wait and see. And I repeat myself, he who rides at the back of the tiger, most often than not, ends up in his stomach. And I hope that, I believe, and I, I, I hope that the, the governor has not talked his um, grave quote and unquote on this situation. Because if you are giving back power to those that want you out, it's just a matter of time. And you see what will happen. I would have thought that you're already having some kind of leverage uh, in the in the judiciary or in the court. You should have followed that through. He has given some level of legitimacy, which has given him a leverage to, be able to do some of the things. That and for goodness sake, if you look at the commissioners that are resigned, almost all the key ministries were in the hands of Wiki, Minister of Finance, AGF, Transport, name it. Yeah. So how many are them? How how are these guys going to be loyal to the government? Mm -hmm. How is going to implement most of this? Need to it, it, it's, it's a difficult, but let's wait and see. You know, in rivers in the past two a week or two weeks, we have been seeing at one in two as there, at one and two <laughs> in three. We are going to see at three in four really as it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let's move to daily independent. Uh, the Headline we're taking now is federal government should prioritize taming inflation, not a one trillion dollar economy. The writers are analysts label one trillion dollar economy target as unrealistic and they say decline in inflation will lead to increase in Naira value. We'd like to have your take. I just want to agree. Uh, inflation, rate, inflation rate has been to about 28 cents as of last time. That is the highest in so many years now. So the, the one of the worst in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, and um, we are not uh, Nigerians are not smiling. This is Christmas. You can you can now imagine how many Nigerians can be able to buy a chicken. The chicken is going for about sixteen thousand naira. My sister should know better. Not that they charge. Not that they charge. 
they don't, they don't have much a uh, mood of rice is a mood of hmm. is a I mean, I, 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 I went to the market opinion. yesterday and the prices were ridiculous. Exactly. That is just on one slide. They look at transportation as well. A lot of people are not going to travel this Christmas because they cannot afford transportation. Transportation is, is, is um, a, a bus tramway, one way transport to East Kikas is about 30, 30 something thousand naira. Hmm. They fly, not even go to flight. A flight, a flight ticket to go away from Lagos is about 230. To 240. I'm not talking of return ticket, I'm talking of one week. So, those are the issues and those are the trends. Then, for those that are parents, don't forget that by the time they come back in January, they're going to pay school fees. That one is this there. They are going to pay a uh, house. And, so, it is it, it, it is um, it is a no win win situation. Nigerians are in there. And that is what we wanted to see the government keep the ground running. The president, when he was um, in his inauguration speech, said that he knows what the problem is, that he knows that it's not going to be easy, but he's going to pull his, his leaves and tackle this clearly. And I hope you see that because Nigerians are not smiling in all fronts. Are you talking about the economy as just as we're talking about? Are you talking about the dollar? Are we talking about the price of fuel, um, diesel, and the ease of doing business in Nigeria? Practically all the uh, SMEs have practically died and collapsed. People are losing it. The number, the rate of employment in Nigeria is on a high. So, uh, while you are targeting a one trillion uh, dollar uh, uh, economy, the fact remains that whatever you target it does not translate in the, into the pocket of average Nigerians, and they're able to make ends with them. If that in but it's not looking good at all. Uh, as I said, the inflation rate is being to about it's probably between seven and twenty percent. It's not, mm. which is terrible. Well, we can only hope that it's. It is being tamed because, I mean, my bank account is not smiling right now. <laughs> I know you're not there. It's red. <laughs> yeah, you're it, still it, bank it, is, it is red. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, hoping that something can be done. So, I, I mean, people can just afford the basic amenities of life easily um, and not that you're struggling. But anyways, let's move to Daily Trust. And this major headline here says, Not out of school children, population time bomb. That's the federal government, and the riders here are 680,000 in Kaduna, over 500,000 in Gombe. Bauchi mobilizing resources for educational projects, Bala Mohammed. 3,963 teachers in public schools fail qualifying exam nationwide. And finally, over 50% of private schools teachers unqualified. This is by the TRCN. Um, I'm sure we know a lot. So I think we've had had a conversation about this. All the Amajiris, uh, you know, on the streets. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. There, there, there's children that are supposed to be in school and they're not in school. And obviously, if you're not teaching them and educating them, um, they don't even have the resources to become better citizens in future. Um, but now that they're saying it's a population time bomb, what do you think about that? Yeah, you're very right. You remember we discussed this issue some, right. some weeks back uh, when we were talking about the issue of Amajiri in the north. And also where it was said that the, some um, states in the in the north spent about 50 billion naira for scholarship to abroad mm. for certain individuals. And we are saying that if those money, that money is pumped into the uh, education sector in the north, then we won't have most of the problem we are having now. The, 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 it's a time bomb that is, you know, time bomb, they mm -hmm. time it from probably 10, uh, they time it from maybe uh, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, mm. uh, or 15 minutes. This time bomb is going to about two minutes now, and the next thing is one minute, then before you know it, it will explode. The rate of poverty in the north, the rate of children out of school in the north is on a high, and I said it last time that I visited some part of the north, including uh, Bauchi, uh, Gumbi. Uh, Katsina, Kaduna, and what I saw was shocking. The number of children roaming the streets, carrying plates and begging, in tatags and in tags. These are children that are supposed to be in school, and they continue to ask, what is the essence of having children if you cannot give them the basic the education, especially in primary and secondary school? If the best the government, this is something government can do. You can put all these children in primary and secondary school and still pay for them. The former government of Good Lord Jonathan came up with the, uh, Amager, what's the guy's name? The, the, the other school, I can't remember. Mm. Um, that the Amager Amager system. Yeah, that, yeah. Yes, the Amajiri school system. Mm. We have schools we have built. 
and we have made sure that these children find their way back in the classroom. And everybody was happy with it. But immediately that government left, and you think that a government like that of Muhammad Buhari, who is also somebody, yes, president of Nigeria, but somebody from the north, mm. who ought to know better, supposed to, to, to have sustained that uh, that's, uh, policy. He, he, he did it. And that uh, policy died naturally. So, um, Daily Trust is not telling us anything that is new. But the fact, then you duplicate this on the, uh, what is happening at the ID count and the number of people at the ID count. And about one, over 1 million people are in ID camps in most parts of the country. In fact, in, in Bono and Dona, I think there are over 500,000. A majority of them are children who practically have nothing to do. And as we say in this part of the world, the devil, um, an idle hand, the devil push up because mm. when, they don't, when they don't have anything to do, they don't go to school, they don't have any work, then they become very, very prone to all the terrorists who now recruit them and use them to perpetrate all sorts of evil because if somebody that's not eating and you see somebody that can give you food, bread, and whatever, and say, come, come on, come, let me give you some jobs. Definitely, they will just give them, and that's it. It is even that. That is why you see the high rate of banditry in the north. Most mm -hmm. of the people being used are children of the poor who cannot find a way to school. Because if you are in school, <laughs> the possibility of lawing you out to come back, go into the bush, Start kidnapping people, start killing people, and the rest of the world. So I hope this government should not lose the, it will not lose its eyes from the on the ball because it is a time bomb that we do nobody any good. Any little time in the security system because we already have serious security problem. Not only in the in the north, even the south, which is why also we are saying that I, I am also advocating that we should find a political solution to the problem in East. That to do with the special has, has to do with the Nam Dekal. Yes, the Supreme Court has made this one, but we can find a, solo, a political solution so that the fragile peace, seemingly, that seems to be going on, is, will not explode in the next few weeks because some, uh, uh, some um, uh, non state actors are taking advantage of the continuing incarceration of Nam Dekal to perpetuate all sorts of evil and insecurity. Couple with the guy that is, uh, is in Finland that is giving out that every day, asking people to stay at home every month. If we can be able to find a solution, a political solution to the shop now, yeah. and it comes out, I will reach another kind of agreement. I think it also doubts the level of insecurity. Okay. Now, Southwest, a lot of kidnapping is going on along the Lagos Ebato Expressway. Now, mm. I'm sure you've heard of that. Yeah. A lot of people have been kidnapped on the, in the past one week, going to two, I don't know because of whether it's because of Christmas season or what. But a lot of people are being kidnapped. So the issue of Amoteku should be revitalized and make and um, put in a better perspective so that it also, we, we have a lot of insecurity problems around. Yeah, around. that's that's so why that's why we're glad. Mm -hmm. That's why we're glad that Afeni Fair is trying to um, uh, proffer some solutions, Solution. alternative solutions uh, to the security problem in the country. But be that as it may, uh, we need to wrap it up at this moment right now. Chris, we'd like to thank you for coming on the show uh, this morning. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. No problem. No problem. We'll get you that. <laughs> All right. We'll be speaking to Chris Kende Wando, the member of the Chartered Institute of Abiturators in the UK, but he was joining us here in Lagos State. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be talking about the NMPCL pledging to produce 2 million barrels of crude daily. Stay with us. <laughs>